Hi there, I'm Lucas Kendall. This is my friend Charlie Vignola, and we're back for another one of our screenwriting YouTube shows. And today we are doing log lines, and we're doing your log lines, which means that we are actually commenting on user submissions for the first time, which we hope is useful and we hope it becomes popular. And we're going to try and find a very uh, a fine balance between being kind and encouraging, but also honest, so you can understand what really happens when your screenplay ideas are submitted to managers or producers or whoever it may be. So the first thing we need to do is explain what is a logline. And the logline is a one or two sentence capsule summary of what your script is about. Uh, for example, here's a very good one for the movie A Quiet Place. In a decimated near future, a lone family must try to survive ferocious alien creatures who hunt using acute hearing. So it gives you who it's about, what it's about, the protagonist, the antagonist, the conflict, the story engine, all that cool stuff is suggested in this one log line and it makes people go, wow, that's cool. I can sort of imagine what this movie is. I can imagine that it would be fun to watch. And that's what a really good log line does. And if you're wondering, well, why do I have to have the one of these? It sounds like it can be annoying to make and it, it, it can be. Think about being on a dating website and you don't have a picture. Nobody's gonna click on your profile without a picture. It's just human nature. And there are so many scripts and so many writers and that your log line is like your picture on a dating site so that if just so that people can even determine whether they want to look at it. Uh, and the most important thing that your log line conveys is a really cool concept, and that is Charlie's specialty. So take it away, Charlie. Yeah, so uh, this was my job for decades at Jerry Bruckheimer Films. I was trying to find cool ideas to turn into movies. The ideas could come from anywhere, um, but the concept is what hooks you. And your version of this is going on any streaming platform and looking at what are the descriptions of the various shows or movies that are on there. That's gonna determine what's gonna get your attention. There are literally hundreds, thousands of those little capsule descriptions on Hulu, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and you and your wife or you and your girlfriend or you yourself decide what am I going to watch <clears throat> based on, on those little descriptions? Well, it's no different when Hollywood is looking for uh, ideas to develop. We're out there in the marketplace and we're looking for like, what are some cool movie ideas? And they can come to us in the form of a script. They can come in the form of a verbal pitch. They can come in the form of a comic book, a book, all sorts of things. Um, a log line, generally speaking, is written after your script. In other words, uh, a log line describes the screenplay you've written. Now, a log line is just a fancy term for what's the concept of the thing that you've written. Uh, and so before you've written anything, you obviously have to come up with what's the cool movie idea. So writing a log line then is just basically like, what is my, what is my idea? What is my concept? And it should be short, sweet, dynamic, novel, uh, pithy, something that's easily relatable to somebody else, uh, and something that creates an immediate curiosity um, in, in you as to like, okay, I'm curious to see how that, how that turns out, how that idea turns out. If you can't do that as a writer, if you can't take your idea, your, your script, and boil it down to a couple of sentences that are enticing, to somebody who's not read your screenplay, you're dead in the water. This is uh, one of the most important things I tell to any aspiring screenwriter is really think hard about the idea you're gonna spend months writing because the first thing you're gonna lead with is gonna be, okay, what's your idea about? What is your log line? And if that isn't sufficiently interesting, I am not gonna solicit your script at all. I, I mean, you might be a brilliant writer, but the problem is if, if your idea doesn't intrigue me, then I'm frankly too busy to worry about reading a screenplay with a banal or mediocre or generic sounding concept because there's too many more interesting concepts that I have to pay attention to. 
So um, it's critical to make sure you can boil down your, your, your movie idea into a log line that sounds intriguing to uh, audiences, to development executives, to filmmakers. Okay, excellent, thank you. I have a couple of things to add. One is that there are some websites where they critique log lines and they get very detailed into the nitty gritty of having every word be perfect. And there's definitely an art and a science to it. And it is important. You don't want your log line to have like spelling errors and look amateurish. But for me, it's more about what is the concept of the movie that's being conveyed. I personally don't care as much about, you know, is it perfect grammar or is it perfectly written? It's, it's I'd rather have a, a poorly written log line that has a great idea behind it than a perfect log line, but <laughs> the idea is not interesting. Because what we're, everybody in the movie business is after is the idea to make a movie. Uh, I also want to add that it's really my goal, at least, and probably Charlie's too, that we have more, um, more advanced writers, writers who are really on the cusp of breaking in, who are like really wanting to talk story and really wanting to get into the nitty gritty of business things and, and um, a, a very sophisticated level. And we also realize that what happens is you get very entry level people watching your shows too. And the ideally we'd make a show that's for everybody. Um, but in the process of talking about these log lines now, I realize it sounds very entry level and I don't want the people to tune out or like, yeah, I know this and why should I watch this? Um, so this week we, uh, I, we solicited log lines publicly and we did that so that we figured we'd be legally protected because we don't want anybody to say that, um, hey, you stole my idea if we make a similar movie 10 years from now. And um, Charlie had a good explanation about the subtleties of that or why you should care or not, so. Yeah, you, you I, I notice a lot of aspiring screenwriters when I'm looking at uh, Facebook message boards are very concerned about sharing their ideas, even sharing their screenplays with people. They're very concerned about and what if they rip off my idea? Should I copyright? Should I register it with the Writers Guild? All that kind of stuff. And the, the, the simple answer is, if you are not comfortable uh, uh, submitting your ideas for responses, for feedback, for uh, you know uh, approval, you can't be a screenwriter. <laughs> you you have to be able to like talk to people you don't know and pitch your idea or send your screenplay out. First of all, it is hard to get anybody to read your material to begin with, okay? Because people like me are inundated, I can't tell you, inundated with material to read. So you really, it's hard enough to get somebody to read it. So if your first and uh, foremost concern is somebody's gonna steal my idea, maybe this is not the business for you because uh, there's no way that people are going to be able to like hire you or potentially buy your ideas if you don't want to talk about your ideas. Um, there's such a thing as parallel development, which is, uh, you know, several people could be working on the same idea at the same time. You think somebody took your idea, but that's not the case. Is there any actual idea theft in Hollywood? Yes, but it's rare. Just like the idea that you might win the lottery. You might win, but it's extremely rare that shouldn't be your concern. So at the end of the day, you have to be comfortable with sending out your material, sending out your log lines, because what you want at the end of the day is somebody to solicit your script. And the only way they're gonna do that is if you write a really enticing uh, capsule summary of what the concept of your movie is to get them to wanna go, okay, yeah, send me your screenplay. Okay, so why don't we just read um, through the ones that were put on this Twitter feed I started. And remember, we are such experts that I can't even figure out how to light my room so that I'm not dark with the background light <laughs> behind me. So very high production values here. But here's what Perfect. was sent in. And we're not like, um, this is not a writing group. And this is not a matter of like, we like your idea or not like your idea. It's easiest for us to just say, this is what's gonna happen if anybody who seriously makes movies encounters your log line. And they're probably going to pass, but we're going to tell you the exact reasons why, and then you can go, oh, and you can start to improve your game. So the first one I got was called MUX or MUX, a tech-enhanced soldier is shipwrecked and must help his rescuers defeat a gang of space pirates. So this is the first one ever, and I think we'll just keep it simple to say, I think Charlie, and we haven't discussed these, but I think Charlie and I will agree, it's just too generic. 
It is generic, and first and foremost, that title. Got to work on a better title. Uh, M-U-X, and the fact that it's just an odd-sounding word and that it's not evocative of anything. If you're going to have a title with your, with your blog line, titles are important. You should try to come up with an interesting title, something that is befitting the material, something that is kind of clever. Um, that title immediately would uh, make me go, ooh, okay, that's not so great. Um, I would say that, and, and also this is important too, when you're submitting your material, make sure you're submitting your material to production companies or producers who do the thing you're writing, right? So this is clearly a sci-fi um, idea. So maybe don't send it to Scott Rudin or maybe don't send it to Megan Ellison or, you know, Sofia Coppola. Um, you want to make sure that if you're going to send out your material, you're trying to fish you know, where the, the fish are that you're trying to catch. So uh, as long as you're sending it to a production company that is interested in science fiction, that would be good. A tech enhanced soldier, as, as Lucas, you know, and I would point out is a little bit of a generic character. What's interesting about that? You know, it's, it's, it's pretty standard fare for science fiction. Shipwrecked and must help his rescuers defeat a gang of space pirates. Um, it's two movies at the same time. Yeah, it, it's, it's two movies at the same time. It, I, I would say this. The idea itself isn't sufficiently novel or intriguing enough that I would be compelled to want to read it. And that's the kind of thing where you'd want it to be, it, that would be purely execution contingent. If I read that and it was like, oh my God, this is enemy mine, or you know, it's, it's something that's like profound and, and, and incredibly interesting, that might be the case, but the log line itself is a little, little generic. All right, let's, um, I would like to continue through these. And um, I think, uh, and we've talked about this, but again, we're making this up. We'll try and go through them all and just say a few things about each one. And then I think it would be better if at the end, we sort of say some general conclusions that will probably apply to most of them. And that way also, it's not, it's not like we're picking on any one person. Cause we do, I, I just wanna say personally, like I was bullied as a kid and I hated it. And I'm always, um, sometimes there are managers and producers on Twitter who are like making fun of how people have such stupid ideas and, and send them, you know, like pitch them a stupid idea in the elevator and like, what a dumb fan, but it, that's punching down. And I, it, it's sad and uh, people shouldn't do that. And we should really respect people from wherever they are who are trying to be creative. I also, also, I'll say this. Uh, I, I don't think we're trying to like judge the relative quality of the idea so much of, as how the idea is conveyed through these log lines, right? Can we yeah. say that? Yeah, so sure. any of these, any of these written by an exceptionally good writer could be a great film. Yeah, any but of these things, if any of these landed on our desk and it was by Aaron Sorkin, we'd read right. it. Totally. Right. So we're not, so we're not yeah. talking about, this is not, this is a good idea, this is a bad idea. It's how the idea is, is coming across in these specific uh, log lines. Well, no, okay. it is if it, wait, I think it is if it's a good idea or a bad idea, but it doesn't mean you're a good or bad person or well, a good I, or bad yeah, I, yeah. But I'm, and I'm also, but, but I'm also saying like, like, as you just pointed out, a good writer could take the most simple idea and make it amazing. Yeah. But your job here is to try to get me overworked, Harry development executive, who's got a million things trying to grab my attention. You're trying to grab my attention. This is about right. attention grabbing. How do you, in, in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> so right. how do, how do, right, how do well, you- let's, let's keep going. Yeah. So yeah. the next one didn't have a title. Also, these are, these came from Reddit. So they're anonymous. That's why I'm not crediting anybody. And um, look, we met on Reddit. You get you get what you pay for. Um, Joe is finally set to debut as, as head coach of his son's little league baseball team. His passion for the game, obsession with his son becoming the greatest player ever, and dreams of a championship season are constantly challenged by his estranged father, old rivals, and keeping his own household from falling apart. So it's this one's to me, it's it's too generic and it's too low stakes, and there isn't any one unique element. I mean, it could be bad news bears, but um, there's only one bad news bears, and so we want to know like what makes this a spin on bad news bears. Do you what do you think? I think that this is one of those things where it's all about how you write this idea. Because if if somebody came to me with this idea, I could say, oh, so this is a Will Ferrell comedy? 
this is a comedy about a guy whose life is falling apart and becomes the coach of his son's little league team. And this becomes the focus of his entire life in sort of this over the top comic way where his entire sense of worth is coming from him being the George Steinbrenner of this like little league team and putting so much emphasis on his son because every other part of his world is falling apart. But I'm not sure that that's the tone. I'm not sure that that's the version of this based on the log line that I'm reading. But if you came to me and you pitched that version of the idea, it's a Will Ferrell vehicle, it's it's something like that, maybe I'm like, oh, that could be funny. That's yeah. that's kind of an interesting idea. I think what we're trying to say is that movies, especially studio movies, are about the extremes of the behavior. In Bad News mm. Bears, it's specifically an alcoholic, washed up loser has to become like a surrogate father to these, these helpless, you know, hapless kids. And so you get the human relationship of this alcoholic who has to then take care of these kids and these kids who all have their, their messed up home life who have to become a team together. You always want to uh, sculpt your idea in the direction of where the emotion is. And you right. can also, you, there could be a movie that would, uh, that would be about, you know, it would be called, um, you know, Coach Dad or somebody who was a failed college star and, and now his son is a prospect and he's gonna he's gonna make his son get into the big leagues no matter what. So it's a matter of- or, 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 or conversely, it could be a major league coach mm -hmm. for a baseball team has been run out of town on a rail for some sort of like, you know, uh, scandal and suddenly is a stay at home dad and it's like, well, what, what if you coach Little League here in our small town and this guy suddenly turns the Little League team into the, it's a microcosm like election, like the movie election for Major League yeah. Baseball with this small town team that uh, kind of comments on, you know, all the issues in Major League Baseball but with 10 year olds or nine year olds. Like yeah. there is sort of a funny version of that. Or it could be Coach Mom or co you know, coach gay mom. It could be an outcast, a person that nobody in this community respects has to coach the Little League. So what we're trying right. to, and there are like hundreds of development executives who would be able to, Charlie could probably come up with 12 versions of this just yeah. you know, from practice, from 30 years of doing it. And there are probably 300 Charlies in offices working today who would do the same thing. They're gonna sit down and go, oh, what about this? What about this? What about this? Because they know, how you have to think for the the money people you know how, how you have to think for the poster right and we're talking about two different things one is if somebody came to me with this idea and said we just bought this pitch uh because a friend of a friend whatever you got to work with it well then as a development executive i got to figure out how to turn that into a movie right but we're talking about that's not the case you're writing this to get me to read your screenplay so what is the version of that idea written in the most sort of enticing way that's clear about as Lucas was talking about the character arc the tone the kind of movie it is like right now reading this um I'm not sure based on this it's also a little bit of an unwieldy log line it's a little yeah. bit kind of loose and too wordy but like there is a version of this that's the Adam Sandler movie it, it you know there there is a version of that that is the Netflix movie where it's like you know a major league baseball coach who got you know, ridden out of town on a rail and is now running his local Little League team as if it's the Yankees. And 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 like, you know, like Alexander Payne's election is kind of a commentary on that. You could do that. That's not yet what that log line is. But if it came to me, I could sort of find a way to turn it into that. But that's not what we're talking about. Okay. We're talking Very about good. getting my attention. Yes. All right, next one is called Unpaid Intern. When her new politician boss turns out to be a contemptible jerk, an unpaid intern schemes revenge by running the campaign of his sex worker opponent. And I had a thought, I don't know what Charlie's about to say, but my thought is that there are two different things here that are competing. One is that it sounds like it's a swimming with sharks intern movie. And then the other is that it sounds like a rival politician movie. And I'm not sure they're needed or compatible together. But Charlie, what, were you, what, what do you think? No, no, that's actually a pretty good read. I was going to say something very similar, which is it does kind of seem like two different ideas butting up against one another because, you know, an, an un unpaid intern does bring up the idea that you're the low man on the totem pole, right? So there is a version of this, which is the secret of my success, or as you just pointed out, the idea of like, you know, deciding that he's being abused and is going to go run the campaign of the sex worker opponent 
like that's a that's it's a whole idea unto itself which is right somebody who's basically like running like the candidate like the the uh, robert redford movie it's like somebody who basically is like uh, a, a campaign manager who can't get the same thing campaign manager who can't get a job who, who you know is, is some scandal and then the only person that he could even get a job working for is you know some ex-porn star running just to get some attention or a one issue thing and then it winds up unexpectedly becoming um a real a real uh, uh race because this guy finds himself inspired by this situation and it's kind of a a parody or a, or a satire um but yeah the the sort of unpaid intern part of it as i think what's kind of bumping me there and it's kind of a collision of two different movies that are kind of not quite meshing together okay next one tartarus or tartarus during public panic over a serial killer in 1919's New Orleans, Esther Pepitone kills an innocent man in a seemingly open and shut conviction until the investigation challenges political corruption, lust, and the very fabric of the lies we tell ourselves. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is based okay. on that. It's a I, have a few, I have a few questions. Yeah. One would be, is this based on a real story? Because you always should right. say that. Because that would make right. it, then people are like, oh, cool. True stories are, are great because... And they're usually great if it's either like somebody famous, but the inside story you don't know, or if it's somebody you've never heard of who did a really consequential thing. Right. This one is also period pieces are probably better writing samples than they are movies to be sold and made because they're so expensive. Uh, I don't really, there's so much stuff going on here. Well, there's a, first of all, we talked about titles again. That's a weird title. Yeah, so weird I don't know title. what that means. A. A, B, you're using the name of a character, which I assume must mean it's based on a true story. Otherwise, why are you using a real name in a log line? Yeah, right? usually log lines just don't have the names. The it's name. The, the generic, who the character is. So this one, it, like a serial killer movie in 1919 is one thing, and a courtroom drama is another thing about the conviction and then the political corruption lust. And then at the end of the log line, it's, 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 um, it's a little amorphous. Yeah. You don't want to end a log line with, and then they discover the true meaning of happiness or, or and then they finds out the true uh, opponent is, the, is himself. You know, it, if it's more poetic at the end of the log line, it means there's something wonky about the structure. Um, yeah, because if you strip away all the kind of vagueness of it, it is... There's a serial killer in in New Orleans in 1919, but then somebody killed an innocent man and dot 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 something. Like I don't know based on the logline yeah. what that is. Like, right. So that's a problem. At, at the um, in, at the entry level, your movie should be one concept that's simple and that has one specific story engine. And I want to talk about that when we get through them all. And so I, I'll go on to the next one here. Uh, the Deadbeat's Guide to Becoming a Hero. An underachieving superhero must fight his own toxic masculinity in order to become the hero his city neither wants nor needs. Uh, off the top of my head, I would, it's sad because I, I used to love superhero movies and now of course we're all, you know, exhausted from them, but and superhero movies, they're always or always, if not 99% of the time made from existing IP intellectual property, they're books, or Marvel or DC or graphic novels or independent comic things, they don't make original science, uh, superhero stories unless they're from big directors or big writers. So it's, you're always, if you're gonna write an original superhero thing, you're kind of um, behind the eight ball just from the beginning. I agree. Um, I also think that it's doesn't really it's 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 also a little vague in terms of like i don't know what the plot of that is yeah. it's like Han it's almost is this hancock yeah it's it's almost like a yeah i mean it, it's a little bit of hancock but it's like i don't know what the what the plot is there that's a character arc i guess it's kind of like um a macho a-hole becomes more uh more sensitive but like i don't know what but, well, we talked about is. we talked about the logline should present the antagonist, so you know what the struggle is, you know what the goal is. And this one, yeah. it's a very internal antagonist because it's himself, his own toxic masculinity, or the antagonist might be the city that's very apathetic about him. So it's um, 
a high goal, but that's the reason why we found it a bit uh, fuzzy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next one, he uh, said, "This is a novel idea." Here's my logo. I don't know if that means it's a a, a newish idea or an idea for a novel. But in any case, <laughs> called Mombasa. Right. I don't know. Right. But um, yeah. You know, thank you everyone who submitted these, and you're our guinea yeah. pigs. And I know you, you know you got courage and you have willingness to put yourself out there and learn and and thank you. So this one says, when a bipolar surgeon's life spirals out of control in the midst of a suicide epidemic amongst African doctors, a childhood friend, now an aging sex worker, attempts to help him come to terms with a fateful secret from their checkered past before it's too late, based on true events. So. True story is cool. This has like four things going on and I don't understand what it's about. I think that's the key here is that the log line is kind of sprawling with too many elements. So it's unclear what the basic idea is. It, I, I guess we're supposed to take from this that a troubled surgeon uh, meets uh, an old friend who helps him through their troubles, I guess. Um, but it seems like there are other elements going on, like again, in the midst of a suicide epidemic amongst African doctors. So like, is that sort of like, um, like a bigger story that is being dealt with in the background? And it, there's just a lot going on. There's a lot going on. It's not very focused as a, as a log line. So okay. it's a little hard to kind of hook into it. So here's the last one from Reddit. A timid, terminally ill mute must guide three strangers to their shared room in a labyrinthian hotel for the entertainment of the guests and staff in 12 hours or lose their lives and their souls. This to me was too vague and too complicated. Uh, yeah, I was trying, I, like, again, as I was reading it, my mind is going like, The Shining Cube? Like, what? what is this idea? Like, this is um, people that find themselves waking up in a weird house with shifting hallways and don't know where they're going and what they're doing but they're being observed by third parties who are like uh this is their form of entertainment it's yeah we don't know odd. if this is big game or yeah, it's, you it, it, yeah, or, it's a little or odd an aronofsky yeah, movie yeah it's, again a lot of these as you're seeing is like it's 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 focused like what 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 is it and and if you're having this much trouble kind of explaining your idea then there might be something about the idea itself that's you know that's troubling um okay okay um, so now we're on to twitter so we will um give the names of the uh, the brave contributors connor conway his thanks daughter, connor thank you two out of work friends steal an abused dog from a gang of skinheads and blow up their lives can they survive long enough to give the pup a new home you usually don't want to make the um the log line have a question. It's not the place for like a tagline on a poster. Um, what's your take on what, this? What's the tone? Yeah, I, I didn't know that. Know, I don't. I don't know what this is. This meant to be it's like super comedy? bad, or yeah, yeah. Like, I, I is it meant to be a comedy about two people who try to kind of do the right thing, but to the wrong people, and then hijinks ensue? Is it after hours? Is it kind of a black comedy? Is it meant to be like Green Room, but with a dog? You know, um, I'm not quite sure. And and obviously it can work any of the ways that we're talking about. It also doesn't feel like a studio movie at all. I mean, just the idea that you're talking about skinheads would automatically relegate this to maybe an indie company at best, but I still don't know. Tone is key here. I don't know the tone. If it's meant to be a farce if it's meant to be earnest um that makes all the difference in terms of the kind of movie it is so i can't tell what this is meant to be okay i i thought so too um quintus young his log line a world famous chef who's overworked and overwhelmed starts using off-the-shelf foods as his own will he succeed the most entertaining fine dining experience you'll ever have um, for me, it was like, it, I was thinking, wait, it's Sweeney Todd, but it's just, you know, Cheerios from the supermarket instead of actual bodies. So, and and half, half, of the lo half of the log line is, you know, uh, slogans for the movie, as you pointed yeah. out, you're not supposed to do that either. Um, and it's, and again, it's not, that's not a movie idea. It's more of like a um, food network a concept for a TV show, which is like, you know, these Michelin chefs have to do chopped in their own like pantry. And, you know, maybe that's, maybe that's a show. As a movie, I don't think that there's enough drama there to kind of hook you and make you interested in reading that screenplay. 
Uh, next is uh, from Todd Klinger, who uh, was, hi Todd, who, who is very, very you, complimentary. Todd. I don't want to sound like Trump where it's like, he was nice to me, you know, but he was nice and he was encouraging of what we're doing and he brave to submit this, so thank you. So his is called the Boca Shuffle, which he adds as a dramedy feature. It is helpful in parentheses to, you know, let us know what the genre is. And it was my fault that I forgot to ask them. A restless retiree escapes his corrupt senior home by convincing his young van driver to take him and his motley crew and on a cross country adventure to reunite with the one who got away. So it's okay. like, an, it's a road trip, old people on road trip. Finding the, yeah, yeah. First, of first of all, life. the, the Boca Shuffle is an actual title. <laughs> so like, that's at least something, right? Yeah, um, yeah it's a good title. Uh, it's a good title. I would also say what the first thing it kind of reminded me of was something like maybe Little Miss Sunshine, kind of like a smaller kind of like oddball road trip movie. And the idea of sort of um, a bunch of oddball senior citizens uh, and the kind of contrast with like sort of a young aimless van driver who's just sort of starting his life and hasn't really found his way there's some sort of generational conflict that could be there it doesn't seem like a studio film again this seems like if it was going to find a home anywhere it would be more on the independent spectrum but they do make movies like this and so um at Bruckheimer, i would read this and i'd be like yeah it's probably not for us but is there a potential movie to be made out of that conceptually sure could be. Yeah. I should say that um, some, I've seen some managers give interviews like this where um, they've, they've sort of said some of the things that they get for some reason pitched to them over and over and over in these cold emails are road trip movies. And for some reason, movies where it's about a wannabe actor, writer, filmmaker has to move back to their hometown to run the family business or it's the writer or director who's running the family business and wants to leave. And somehow it always involves the family business and going to the hometown. So there, I think there are trends that as people uh, figure out how to write and what they want to write and they draw from their own emotions and their own experience and what drives them, you do tend to get road trips and you tend to get these hometown business things. And one of them, I was like, oh no, I did that. And I'm like, I was like, I'm a cliche, I am. And so but, I, but but those are genres. I mean, yeah, they are genres. Are, are a thing. And mm -hmm. a person who moves back to their hometown to find their soul is a subgenre. You know, there's a million of those movies. It just so, means that when they're done, they have to be super distinctive yeah. and 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 well, well they really have to be executive. conceptually conceptually novel, yeah. right? Because yeah. again, you'd you'd point out that's a voice script, you know, because it's conceptually kind of low yeah. concept, right? Yeah, okay. and this one, when I saw corrupt senior home it made me think that this leans more in the direction of farce or broad comedy. Uh, it's like if it was the Sundance movie, the person who's going on the road trip to find the one who got away doesn't need to be, doesn't need a, to be goosed by a corrupt senior home. It could just be the, the dreariness of retired. Yeah, life. that's a very good observation, Lucas, because I was going to say my eyes actually skipped over the word corrupt in that log line because it had nothing to do with the main idea. It was yeah. unnecessary. All these little okay. words that you use suggest tone yeah. and they help you, they help the, yep. and that's why there is an art to sculpting these things. And it's an art that I could, I could get a lot better at. Yeah. Uh, I don't really like to do it. Next one is GA Cool, which uh, oh, is from GA Cool. Thank you, G.A. 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 He Who Laughs Last, a comedy. After getting dumped by his girlfriend, a heartbroken guy joins a support group who set out for revenge against their exes. Well, in the year 2022, post Me Too, I would not touch this with a 10-foot pole because you're talking about an idea about a bunch of spurned guys trying to screw over their women when they may very well be responsible for getting dumped in the first place. And it's about people doing something negative or antagonistic to women. Now, if you want to say like, oh, I'm going for like horrible bosses and it's some kind of black comedy, maybe, but it feels like just 10, 15, 20 years ago, this might've been a more viable idea than in a Hollywood that's much more attuned to, um, you know, this kind of subject matter. I, I think it would be almost impossible. Uh, to get this. Yeah. It idea. is true uh, that um, you will encounter all kinds of like political things and social things about the moment that make certain ideas untouchable. 
yeah more from from certain writers so we'll talk about it another time yeah uh there's one more and i want to talk about it because uh the writer jennifer lusick uh was very cool and i liked her idea and i asked for the script and i read the script and then i gave her feedback so I'll, we'll read the logline first and i'll tell you why i really liked it and i asked mm -hmm. her for the script so it's called glow girl coming of age drama feature when an insecure college girl falls for the bad boy, desperation to be with him forces her to follow him into his hedonistic world of drugs and underground rave culture. She finds herself trapped in an abusive relationship and a life spinning out of control. I like this because it's, it's simple, it's direct, and I understand what the movie is. I understand the story engine. I understand the conflict inherent. Yeah, I understand how an insecure college girl would do this. And it's probably something a lot of insecure college girls sort of have it in their hearts to do. And then it's that what if they actually do it? What if she actually does go and hang out with the bad boy and become the bad boy's girlfriend and deal drugs and blows up her life? And there's something very sympathetic and empathetic. And so I thought, wow, that really, and it, it seems that, like it had a real interest in humanity. It had a real, mm -hmm. like there was something substantive here. Yeah. Uh, so I went to her when, website. When I, when, I, when I read it, it actually reminded me of the Evan Rachel Wood movie 13, which I don't know if you've seen that movie. I did. It reminded um, me of Britney Runs a Marathon. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a movie called 13, and uh, Evan Rachel Wood is the lead, and it's not the college version of 13 year old girl you know, with a single mother and um, she basically, it, it's, a, it's a coming of age story that's kind of very disturbing. And I remember when I saw it, it was like, boy, this is a powerful film, but like for, uh, it just makes you very queasy and, um, and, and it works. It's a very, uh, Catherine Hardwick, who I think went on to direct um, Twilight movie. Yeah. Yeah. That was where she cut her teeth on, um, oh, cool. on 13. So this reminded me a little bit of like a sort of a slightly older version of that dynamic. And 13 works, so there'd be no reason why this wouldn't potentially work as an yeah. idea. So, yeah. um, so I thought that's cool. And I followed her Twitter page to her personal website and I saw that she is a novelist and that this was based okay. on her own book. And that filled me with hope and confidence because writing novels is hard. <laughs> so if you've written one, and even if it's self-published, and I don't know what Jennifer did, but if you've written a novel, like you at least have something going on and there's a credential there. And it's like, okay, so this is not something that was just dashed off the cuff that and and she did tell me it's like her first or second script or she's very much at the beginning stages of um, trying to write screenplays and I so I asked for it I read it and it read very quickly and um, and I gave her a lot of notes and she said thank you and she was awesome which is always what you want and I try to do this myself and I regret that I'm probably not as good as I should be if someone gives you notes say thank you you know be nice uh, and really appreciate the favor that they're doing. And also, even if the notes make you feel like insulted or frustrated or angry, or even if the person actually was an idiot, happened to me uh, sometimes, you know, just figure out, get from it what you can, because, you know, you need to internalize this. You need to learn. Anyway, we all know this. Um, the script, it, it was not ready for the industry. Um, and the main reason is that uh, the story engine of the protagonist was, um, it just, it wasn't all the way there. It was not quite, I, and I said in the email, look, you want something very clear. You want the overweight, insecure girl who um, then goes crazy, or you want the crazy girl gets, it, she was already a little nutty to begin with. She was already like in the, it had a really cool first scene where we made our protagonist and she's getting her nipples pierced, which I've yes. never seen in a movie before. I, I don't know if that complicates your casting, um, but uh, it was just an interesting, unusual first scene and it was very vibrantly written and had a lot of personality. But mm -hmm. to me, that meant that this the protagonist was already- uh, Predisposed to uh, right. be kind of edgy and take risks, right? Right, so Charlie, but you're, okay, I know what you're gonna say. And so why don't you explain how development works with the character's journey? Yeah, I mean, you want to start with somebody who is, uh, you know, their status quo world is going to be much different or that there's going to be a major contrast with what's going to happen. Uh, so their everyday world, if, if you're talking about a person who's already taking risks, 
bungee jumping, tattoos, pierced nipples, all those kind of things, then going into a world where, you know, they're going to be taking drugs or going to raves. It's like they're already predisposed. They're already on that path. Now, if it was a girl who was considering becoming a nun and there was a little bit more of a difference in terms of like their status quo world and that person who's considering becoming a nun meets a guy who tempts her from you know going on that path and taking this other extreme path because of her own sort of sublimated desires then at least there's more of a contrast there so you know you you ideally you want to take a character on a journey that is much different than the the journey they were on at the beginning of the story so anything that creates that contrast would yeah. would help dramatically. So one, yeah. So one thing about the way she had chosen to written write this is there wasn't enough contrast to the journey. There yeah. also struck me as there were many things that needed to happen in the movie that either didn't happen or sort of happened off camera. You know, the moment she loses her virginity, I can't remember exactly. It would be like you know you spend you you pick and choose the moments to spend time on, and they have to be the important emotional moments. Uh, there was, she set up a lot of interesting things like the abuse she got from her family and the body shaming for her family, but it tended to go in the direction of plot, which was that it was setting up a plot with some drug dealers. And uh, so I'll, let me just speak ge uh, generically and I'll speak from my own experience. By the way, this sounds very indie. This sounds very you know, it's indie. Totally indie but it to could totally work, you know, there's, yeah. There's, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so in my own journey, it's like, it's hard to write a movie and it's hard to think of filling 110 pages with stuff that happens. So what you tend to do is you tend to think of fragments of plot, aspects of plot, and you kind of build the plot because it's controllable. You control it and then you've got enough stuff that happens and you feel like, okay, these are all the things that happen. And um, as you get more experience and as you get more sophisticated, what you really learn is that the the principle, every scene in a movie has to be there for a reason. And at the highest level of screenwriting, this is just my own theory, the reason needs to be emotion. If that moment has something that is meaningful, that is emotional, that is relatable, that furthers our connection to that character. And that's like at the highest level of screenwriting because sort of the entry level of screenwriting is to justify every moment in the script as servicing the plot. But plot by itself is just a series of stuff. And it's the emotion that makes the audience want to get invested in it and want to watch it. I'm sure, why don't you take it away? Because I feel like I, I sort of whiffed a bit on this, but. No, no, no. I mean, uh, again, it depends on, um, it depends on the genre, right? I mean, if you're talking about um, action thrillers or suspense or you know series franchise characters batman james bond things like that then they can be plot driven and they're not mostly driven by emotion but that's that's franchises you know the, the certain franchises but well, but most of the time if you're trying to break in you know you are trying to tell a story with compelling characters who every every great script that you're going to read right is about a character who's going on some sort of journey, both like uh, literally and, and figuratively, literally in the sense that they're gonna leave their, their status quo everyday world and go on a journey that takes them away from the norm. Otherwise, why are you telling the story? Like if, if you're just telling a story that's like, this is what every day of their life is like, that's not a movie. It's, it's, it's this person something happens to this person that changes so, their everyday life, right? Just to bet, add one yeah. thing, there, there, I've been told, I, it sounds right, there are only two types of movies. One is a stranger comes to town and the other one is a person takes a trip. Okay, I mean, you know, could very well be the case. But in each one of those, it's about, you, you're living your normal life and then something happens. Aliens land, your child is kidnapped, you find out you have cancer, you meet a person who is, you know, uh, threatening you, something changes your status quo. And ideally, you want your audience to root for the main character in some way that is relatable, identifiable, you know, and they are going to go on some sort of emotional journey so that the events that you're seeing in the movie are going to maybe subtly and maybe profoundly 
change this character by story's end. Again, otherwise, what are we watching and why are we watching it, right? So if it's Luke Skywalker is a, a farm kid who gets to help save the universe, that's an interesting arc. And along the way, he meets people and he like, you know, meets a girl and he makes friends and he loses people that are important to him. He's, he's going on this journey, even though it's a big splashy science fiction story. But, but first and foremost, it's about that character's, you know, uh, emotional journey and the external story that they're going on is the thing that should change them emotionally. So, but, but yes, so it is, is vitally important that you're, you're going on some sort of emotional journey. Now, every scene ideally should be related to emotion and story because if it's not, you can lose it. <laughs> and that's frequently what happens when you're editing a movie, right? You've shot all these scenes and you put together the compilation edit and it's like three hours long. It's like, well, we can't release a three hour movie unless you're Matt Reeves and it's Batman, but most of the time you can't do that. So sure. you have to like, yeah, you bit, bit by bit by bit by bit, you have to like cut the movie down to what is key and what is important. It would be great if you could do that in the scripting phase rather than, you know, waiting until the whole movie is shot. But uh, those are the things that are important in every scene. Is the story moving along? Is the character journey emotionally moving along? Ideally, it should be both. But as long as it's doing one of those two things, that's important. If it's just a scene for color, you know, uh, and a lot of directors like to do this and a lot of like filmmakers like to do this it's like well that was a fun scene but you know what it was like a seven minute scene and we had to cut it for you know uh, pacing reasons but it was a really interesting cool scene um you should try to not write those yeah. if you can you don't want scenes that are just there for exposition that's the kiss exactly of if you have this scene because i need i'm going to show them at the car wash because in act two they're going to rob the car wash then you need to have the, a character scene at the car wash so that the car wash is something transparent. The exposition needs to be transparent, you know, because we're, right. we're not in, we don't invest in exposition, we invest in somebody who wants something. So yeah, um, yeah Jennifer was, was super cool. She's got a lot of talent and um, it, was, it was nice to read her script and it was nice to, to email with her. And, um, you know, it occurs to me that I wonder if anyone will do this, but like we could just take a script and go through it and show some pages and say, okay, this is what we think you did wrong and here would be a better way to do it. I don't know if people would want that um, publicly because uh, I think I'd be a little afraid of it publicly to be the, the potential for embarrassment that then you get some script torn apart and it's gonna be on YouTube for, until the end of time. I, I don't know. Well, it's, it's also it's also about tone, right? The way in which yeah. you're doing it. If you're doing it uh, like uh, Simon Cowell, no, uh, no, no. Well, we would American never Idol, then nobody yeah. would want to see that. But if it's helpful, again, if, if this is about breaking down ways to make your screenplay better and doing it in a way that is instructive rather than meant to um, to tweak or needle the writer, that that's there's no value. We're not interested in doing that. That's, yeah, that's no, not cool. Yeah. But at the same time, what happens is just because we are who we are and Charlie spent 30 years in these offices and I've spent 30 years out here uh, talking to obnoxious people is sometimes, you know, you blurt out these kind of blunt things. It's certain, certainly I do. I do want to add that some, a few people have um, added comments onto the YouTube pages of our previous videos. And I'm going to go back and answer those comments on, um, on those videos. Um, but We've got probably another 10, 15 minutes, and I wanted to talk about some of the general principles to the log line. Um, and for me, it's, it's, it really is the clarity of having one narrative engine. Um, do you, what, yeah. What's your opinion of the Bob McKee book story? Uh, you know what? I've not read it. So do you so, like it? So, so, <laughs> so if you've read it, I'd love to hear what you think about Bob, Bob McKee. Yeah. Um, yeah. I read it a long time ago and I, I found it super useful because I tend to be like a structuralist in the way I think of things. And, and he's very much a structuralist. And he talked about, he took one of the things is like a whole chapter on, look, there are only a certain number of plots, like the coming of age plot, the revenge plot, the tragedy plot. Um, you know, the, uh, he, he goes through like nine or 10 or 11 of these, I don't remember, but um, it made sense. And his point was basically, look, there's no new plot you're going to come up with. So it's about which plot are you doing? And it's about how are you doing it? And the log lines that work is because they check all these boxes. First of all, the first box they check is just emotional. You just go, whoa, that's cool. I want to read that. I mean, that's the home run. 
but they also are, they're clear, like they don't hurt your brain. Right. They have one cool concept and usually like a twist on that concept. That's kind of the, um, the, the secret to it. It's, you wanna take a familiar plot that everybody yes. understands and then you want to put a spin on it so it's something fresh that we've never seen. This is this is the key to getting yeah. the attention of me and anybody yeah. who's a filmmaker, which is, you know, you have to come to me and tell me, look, as, as you just pointed out, there are no new stories under the sun. So what is a new way to tell an old story? That's, that's all Hollywood really is, or novels or, you know, anything, songs. You know, it's like you, you want to take something that's a familiar you know, boy and girl fall in love. Well, now it's, it could be girl and girl fall in love. It could be, you know, boy and robot fall in love. You know, like what is the twist on the romance that is different? You know, Her, the Spike Jones movie, right? That was a guy falling in love with Alexa or Siri or something like that and kind of spoke to our sort of modern world. And that's high concept. That's an interesting twist on the romance. Um, so uh, the, the trick is, yes, to take something old and make it new again, which is the reason why you always see these kind of public domain stories, uh, you know, Frankenstein or Cinderella or Bible stories or things like that, that, uh, you know, people dust off and um, put a new spin on. The, the, the film Clueless is Jane Austen's Emma. You know, it, it's that that's what that was. Um, you know, uh, that that's a way that you can come up with movie ideas is look at Shakespeare look at uh, mythology, look at Bible stories and like, what's, a, what's an interesting spin that you can put on those things? Yeah. That's what I wanna hear. That's what a I wanna hear. Um, a good way to get some practice on seeing what good log lines are, relatively speaking, is, is to look at the, um, the annual blacklist, which is the, the year's uh, list of scripts that development executives said was their favorite to read, because those usually have these really cool sort of log lines that make you go, oh, wow, that, because that's how they got read by so many executives. Uh, we'll give a yeah. link to that in, uh, the, in the channel. And by the way, it might, it might also be uh, helpful to some people out there. Look, what are, what are some movies that you really love? Try to write what you think the log line is for that. You know, you like Splash, you like Big, you like Back to the Future, you like Ghostbusters, you like, you know, how would you write the log line? for those movies that uh, are focused and emphasize the big idea in a quick, clean way. Um, and that might help you just think about it because these yeah. are these are big favorite movies that have a big idea and it might help kind of train you to think, well, okay, how would I describe that? And, and that might inform when you're coming up with your own log line. Yeah. And at the entry level, if you want to get noticed, really high concept is your best and maybe your only bet because you don't have the rights to get, you know, uh, a toy brand or something to adapt or to like to to rep to get a book. Or, you know, if you do get book rights, great. But you know, if if you don't, if they, if you're what's it called a naked script where there's no underneath uh, under uh, no elements, no attachments. Yeah, so. if you don't have a famous director, or a movie star, or a ton of money, all you have is the currency of that idea. Yeah. So, but I also I think that it's. Um, uh, don't paralyze yourself not writing because you can't think of one because everything you write is practice. Yeah. It's gonna take a long time to get good anyway. And yeah. um, I know a lot of people have um, issues with writer's block or issues with their life or the lifestyle, just finding the time and that they're dealing with their job and their kids and that the writing is, is their escape and it's their dream and it's their passion. And, and uh, we support that. That's why this is free. Mm -hmm. um, oh my God, I got to complain about someone. So I saw a YouTube channel of some guy like selling a course. Okay. Uh, and this guy was like, wanted, it was all like these little free 10 minute bits of his program to get you to spend 700 bucks. And to learn how had, to write a screenplay? Is that yeah, what it is? This okay. guy had no credits. He mm -hmm. was like this little pencil neck geek kid. Okay. And um, I can't remember his name, but I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Mm. And I mean, it's just, it is sad. It's sad. And his stuff was all like, here's the grid for story analysis. And this is the right. happens at page 15. And this happens at page this, you know, how do you, how do anybody read these articles? Seven ways to make your dialogue better. And then are you supposed to write your line? 
hey, Jimmy, dinner's ready, and, and think, wait, does that line satisfy the first rule of being novel, <laughs> the second rule of being character specific? You just got to do it. Yeah. Learn by yeah. doing. And the stuff that I, the stuff that I used to learn, to learn myself was very much um, like you learn the principles. It's really, you know, you teach someone how to fish. And unfortunately, yeah, yeah, but, 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 but don't you want to go to the guy who's like an expert fisherman? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, right. Like, exactly. yeah, like, it's like, like, I have a pain in my arm, so I can either go to like the best, most credentialed, most experienced doctor I can find, or I can go to the internet and find a guy who's not a doctor, who's basically telling me how easy it is to yeah, fix my bones. Yeah, spend $700, he's got dollars, he'll fix your arm. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's sad. Also, there's a, I got to here's another thing. I was yeah. thinking there's a, one of these script uh, competition businesses where they have a very popular competition. I don't like these people. Um, my grandmother said, you only hate Hitler. So I don't say I hate these people. <laughs> I know I, in my life, I don't say that because you only hate Hitler. And you only hate Hitler. Okay. Hitler. All right. Because he's, All right. Yeah. anyway, but this, so I know I don't like these people. And um, the principal, like the, the director is also a writer he let slip in an interview. And I guarantee, mark my words, this guy sucks as a writer because if he was any good, he has just spent 15 years having access to every single Hollywood manager. If he was right. any good at all, he would have sold or made something by now. Instead, he's still running his dopey contest. That's pretty true. That's pretty true. And we already warned you about contests in the past, but yeah. 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 Um, um, all wait, right. Uh, there was something I oh, oh hey hey okay so if you like this and if anybody's still watching you know we have tens <laughs> of fans um we'll set up another thread if you want to post your log line or or even if it's like a you know like a bottom of the drawer idea that you have that you want to see what we think anything so that we have stuff to talk about next week but also we need um your help to promote us so it's like i knew there's a, look i would like to be famous I would love this show to be watched by a lot of people and to have people go, hey, that guy is cool and interesting and maybe I'll, I'll read his script because it's hard for me to get read. It's hard for anybody to get read. So if you like what we're doing, you know, tweet about us or hit like on the, on the tweet or hit like on the Facebook post or uh, email us. And then also the last thing I want to say is that if you're one of those guys who's like, you know, doing semifinalists at competitions or sort of getting read by managers and you're like, why is, why is this not happening for me? I know my stuff's good, but people read it and they pass. I can help you. And all I can do is tell you my opinion, but um, I think I have a good track record of being able to say, I think, you know, this is the reason and this is what that idea needs. And this is why they're ghosting you. And, and it's just my opinion, but email me and I'll, you know, if I have time, I'll try and I'll try and help. Why not? Wow, that's a, that's a big won't. offer. Probably. That's a, that's a no, big no, but, offer. For, but, for and all I want out of it is if you think I'm nice and if you think I'm cool and if you think the advice was any good, then just put on Twitter that this guy was nice and helpful and um, check out his show with Charlie. Yeah, and 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 frankly, again, we we enjoy doing this, and and your feedback is very helpful in the comments section. Let us know if you found this useful, if you found this interesting, and what else would you guys like to see? Because we don't know what you know or what you don't know, and we would like to find out and be as, as useful as possible. Okay, guys, that's a good finish. Right as my voice crack, <laughs> like I'm 13 years old again. Okay, Excellent. but that's important for you guys to know. We will make fun of people, but we'll also make fun of, I'll make fun of myself. We're very, we're very self-deprecating. Yeah, yes. no, fair is fair. Fair yeah, is fair. Of course. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Charlie, thank you, and we'll see thank you next you. time. Take care. Bye.